Hi, I'm Hal Aronson. And I'm Laura Stachel. And we're the co-founders of We Care Solar. We thought we would take this as an opportunity to share with you a little bit about our history so you could see the journey that we've all been on. So this is where it all began, in my backyard shop. And we're going to sh quickly show you some of the versions of the We Care Solar suitcase. At first, we were just building them for people that asked for them. Um, this is one that's before version one, and this is the type that Laura brought to Nigeria. I think it's the very first one, actually, that we brought to a Nigerian hospital. And it got replaced. And then this is actually one of the version one version ones, and this was built by me and Brent Molenberg, I believe. And then when we got enough resources and the demand just kept going up, we actually redesigned the solar suitcase for manufacturability. And so this is uh, version 2.0. We had several version twos. And in the last couple of years, we've been shipping out version three, which is um, a magnitude of improvement. It has lithium battery technology and our own uh, designed lights and charge controllers and other features that make it particularly good. Well, there's a number of reasons that we made changes in the solar suitcase over time. One is that after I build something, the next time I build it, I want to make it better. And so just in my own head, I have ideas of how to put together a board, put together connectors, put together parts in a better way. Uh, but more importantly than that, is that we learned a lot from the solar suitcases that went out into the world, both from the people that used them and what went wrong, but also because the more we were in that world, we could see what the conditions on the ground actually were like. We realized that the single most important thing was to have light at night. People were desperate to light up the patients, desperate to have enough light to do suturing or start an IV, so we knew that light was necessary first and foremost. And because people can need help all throughout the night, we realized we needed good quality light that would last all night long. The most challenging thing that we learned was that we were bringing solar electric systems to parts of the world that did not have access to parts and tools and supplies and with people who really weren't trained solar installers who didn't have a truck with parts and tools they needed. And so, so many things like that, or even what the walls were made of. A lot of these walls are like a thin coat of plaster over mud brick. And so we had to find ways to hang the solar suitcase on the wall that would stay on the wall and not break off easily. So we had to really get to know where these were getting installed, figure out how long the wires would need to be run, what would be the easiest way to route them on a building? What kind of connectors would be easy for them to route them with so they could get it off from the roof into the building and into the solar suitcase? And we wanted to make everything fit into the solar suitcase and package it in a way that when the person was installing it, they saw, oh, all these parts go for the roof installation, all these parts go for the wall installation, et cetera, et cetera. So these created all kinds of challenges for us which we uh, met by doing it, trying it, making sure that it worked. If it didn't work, solving the problem. Well, first of all, we were very lucky because when we started this work, LED lights that could actually provide illuminating light for procedures was just being developed and becoming available on the marketplace. So we could use those and those were a game changer because they used very little power to provide an awful lot of illumination. And then as we started to understand more about the conditions in which the solar suitcases were going, um, dirt, dust, rain, blood, we realized that a light that was sealed would be hugely beneficial. And then as we understood better what happens when you seal a light and how you, what you have to do to make it last longer, we were able to develop our light so it would be both waterproof and also be able to get rid of the heat so that the LEDs could last up to 10 years. I think the most significant change in technology was the quality of batteries. Going from lead acid to lithium iron phosphate was a huge improvement because they weighed less, they would last about three times as long, and if you're in a situation where they didn't get charged regularly, it didn't damage the battery. You could also drain the battery more deeply which meant that there was more energy available for use on a daily basis. And they could even handle things like 
extreme temperatures. Well, when I started off doing the solar, I was used to teaching people in the United States how to do solar. And often when they were assembling solar electric systems, they would mount it to a plywood wall or a, a drywall in a house or a garage or some building. And so I just naturally went to wood and it was very easy to screw all the components onto a piece of wood because that's how those parts were designed. When we realized that wood was not the best choice because of termites, um, when it switched to plastic, it created new opportunities for mounting the different components to the chassis. And so we took advantage of those opportunities. And then finally, when we went to aluminum, it made it really easy to cut very precise holes to put in different kinds of circuit breakers and different kinds of components that were more easy to mount on an aluminum thin metal chassis than you could ever do on a piece of wood. So it was, it was about the opportunities that changing the chassis afforded us to finding parts that actually made for a better transportable system. You know, the biggest problem that we would see when things are wired in the field is the quality of the electrical connections. And I think this is partly due to training and partly due to what's available in terms of parts. So we decided we had to do the wiring ahead of time, but there were still things that needed to be connected like the solar panel to the charge controller. And so we used the best available connectors that we knew of from the solar industry, but we soon learned that the, sometimes the panel had to be connected and reconnected because they were taking it outside and then they wanted to bring it back inside, etc. So after multiple connections and disconnections, the solar connectors would fail because they really weren't designed for that kind of use. So we then looked to other um, industries for connectors that were done more frequently, the automotive, and then finally to the music industry where we used connectors that came out of connecting speakers, which were connected and disconnected hundreds or thousands of times, but could still carry a lot of power. We found those and those turned out to be excellent choices for the solar suitcase. None of those have ever failed on us. I think the first thing that we did that really helped was how we organized the switches. We reconfigured the solar suitcase so that there was one special switch for turning the system on. And then the other switches, like for lights, which should be turned off when you're not using them, were put on a very different side of the solar suitcase so that it wouldn't be easy to accidentally turn off the main switch when you were trying to turn off lights. Then we also found that it was helpful to give people information right at the solar suitcase. So we developed a poster that would give them a very clear idea of how to read the charge controller to know how the system was working and how to use the switches and also when to use lights, when to charge things like cell phones, laptops, tablets, things that could be charged during the daytime, not taking away the stored power for keeping the lights on all night long. Once we had a case that we really liked that the chassis could be mounted to, then we realized that the case itself could become part of the solar electric system and serve as a waterproof and a dustproof cabinet for mounting it to the wall if it was permanently installed or for carrying it around if it was being used as a mobile system. One of the powerful things I learned was what goes into manufacturing. So when we were building one, two, 10 solar suitcases, that was something we could manage to do in our home or in my shop. But when we had to build larger numbers in manufacture, we had to think about how to put something together in a whole new way so that somebody who never met us could follow a guide and get a, get a bill of materials and make a solar suitcase. You really have to put yourself in the place of the person that's going to install, maintain, or use the system. So the more you can know about the context in which it is going, the better. And the more you can know about the people and what kind of experience and knowledge they bring to it and how much time they have to learn and what their vocabulary for learning this stuff is, the better. And then you make your best guess based on everything you know. You build something that you expect will work really well, but you don't build a thousand of them. You build a small number of them, get them out there and have the people use them and observe how they use them if at all possible. 
which is really sweet, and then take that knowledge to then improve on your design.